A lot of people still don't know what are service workers and how important are they to improve their applications. So by the end of this video you will learn everything that you need to know about service workers, how to configure them and use correctly. So what are service workers? It's a possibility of JavaScript inside browser to cache files and work in offline mode. And just to remind you, when you don't have internet, all your JavaScript, CSS and HTML can't be loaded in the browser, which essentially means if the user doesn't have access to the internet, even for several seconds, he is losing possibility to use your application. You can improve that a lot by using service workers. And now for sure you are thinking, ok, but service workers are not really working everywhere, we can't just use them as a normal part of JavaScript. This is not true, inside can I use, you can see that service workers are available in all modern browsers and they are green, so you can simply use them, they are totally fine. Now let's look on our application, here we have a to-do application which fetches data from the API. And then we can manage this data, we can create new to-dos, we can update them, filter, whatever we need. And this application is just plain JavaScript, without any transpilers and frameworks, so you can better understand how server workers are working. Our whole application starts in main.js and we're including here our index.js file. And here inside initialize, what we can do is register a service worker. In order to do that, inside root, I want to create a new file with name service-worker.js. The name can be anything that you want, because we will provide a name here. Now on the top we can write that if we have a service worker in navigator, it means that this functionality is available in your browser and we can use that. This is why here we can write window add event listener and we are listening for load of the page. And after the page was loaded, we want to call navigator.serviceworker.register. And inside register we must provide a path to our file. It is the URL, not a relative path in our application. In my case it will be slash serviceworker.js, because this file is served just statically from the root of my application. And here we are getting then, and when it is successful we are getting registration, and we can write here a console log, for example service worker registered with, and here we can write our registration.scope. And additionally here we can do a catch with an error, and write here console error, service worker registration failed, and here will be our error. So this is how we register our service worker. The next step that we must do inside our service worker is we can add a listener. In order to do that we can write self.addEventListener and here will be install. So this is a callback when server worker is installed. So let's write here console log server worker install. Now I want to copy paste this callback and create also a callback for fetch and here will be service worker fetch and the third one will be activate. And let's console log it here. Now I'm reloading the page, we don't see any console log, and the question is how we can debug our server workers at all when we have some problems. And in Chrome we can easily do that by clicking on application, and here on the top after manifest we have service workers. Here we have three checkbox and by default at your machine they all will be unchecked. We want to check this one, update and reload. Why that? Because we want to have always a fresh updated service worker for debugging after we reloaded the page. Really often when you are debugging service workers, you can get here several service workers at once. Like here you see one registration and then sometimes you will have more and more. So you can just click unregister and this service worker will be deleted and then you can just reload the page. Additionally important part here is this cache storage on the left. As you can see here I have some cache, I will remove it, so we are starting from scratch, but basically this is a cache of service worker. This is where we will store everything. So now I want to reload the page and look in the console. As you can see we are getting service worker registered with and here is my root URL. Now let's jump to the application and click on the service workers. As you can see there is an old service worker which was deleted and now we have just one new. 
And here we are getting status activated and is running. This is good. It means that we set it up everything correctly. And this is our source file that we created. We can click on it, see the source code. But basically here we can understand that everything is fine. The next question is where are our console logs? Because we wrote three console logs for three callbacks, but we didn't see them here. In order to see them, you need to click on the drop down and select here on the bottom service worker. And as you can see, we got service worker fetch seven times. Now when I'm reloading the page, you could see the blinking of different callbacks. And in order to see them, we can click here on the gear and click preserve log. Now after I'm reloading the page, all this stuff will be there, but you need to reselect service worker again. So we're getting service worker install, then activate and then fetch eight times. Why eight times? Because we loaded eight different resources. Now we have a correct setup and we can start to cache our files. So what is the idea? We want to cache all files which user needs in order to see the page offline. What are these files? First of all, our index.html. This is just the file that we are rendering. Here you can see that we need CSS base and index. So in CSS, there are two CSS files. And on the bottom, we are including main.js. Here is our main.js, which includes to do MVC index.js. This is this file and also helpers.js. These are all files that we want to cache. This is why let's jump inside our service worker. And here on the top, we can create URLs to cache. And this is an array. First of all, we will have here slash, then slash index.html because we have it in the root, then CSS base CSS, as you can see the full path, then CSS index CSS and main JS. As you can see, I didn't add here these two files into the MVC index.js and helpers, but we'll check if it works without them. So this is just an array of URLs that we want to cache, but we didn't really cache them. And we're doing that in the callback of installation. Inside the callback, we are getting an event and on this event, we can write wait until and inside wait until we want to return a promise. And in the service workers, we have one more thing, which is called caches and caches allows us to work with cache. For example, we can write caches open and here we are calling some cache name, which actually means this is just a cache that you saw here inside application cache storage. We can create any cache name that we want. So let's create here cache name, for example, to do app cache version one, and then we can increment it like version two, version three, when we need some changes. So here we're calling caches open with our cache name. And on this we're calling then because it returns a promise. Here we're getting access to the whole cache and we must return cache add all and here URLs to cache, which essentially means we add all these URLs to our cache inside service workers. And you might think, okay, but do we really need this event wait until? Can't we just try this code with caches open without this wait until? It won't work because we need to wait until all these files are cached. Let's check if it's working now. What we need to do, we just need to reload the page. And what happens here, we can see on the left, cache storage now has something, we can open it. And here is our to do app cache version one. And on the right, you can see all resources that we cached. Here is our CSS, base CSS, index CSS, index HTML, and main JavaScript. So we successfully cached these files, but we didn't try to read them from cache. How to do that? We have here our fetch, and this is a callback when we fetch some file. And what we can do here again, we can get access to our event, and then we can write event dot respond with. And inside we want to write our logic. We again can access caches dot match and we are passing inside event request, which essentially means if we are getting here the request that we have inside our URLs to cache, then we can do something with it. So when it is matches, then we have access to our response and we can return here our response. And if we don't have it, we can call fetch with event dot request which essentially means if it is not cached, we just fetch this resource. In other case, we return cached version. And this code is for any case. It is not only for the offline. It is also when we are online. All files that we wrote here will be cached inside service workers. 
Now is the interesting part. Let's look on the network. And as you can see here, we have size and here is text service worker, which actually means this file is coming from service worker. And here is our index.html, two CSS files, main file, but also our index.js and our helpers.js, which means we successfully loaded files from service workers without loading them from the internet. This is great, but now let's check if we're working offline. Here I check this offline box, which as you can see directly disabled the network. I can now reload the page, we are offline, and as you can see our whole page is working. The next important question is how to remove our cache when we are updating the version. Just imagine that we made some changes to the service workers and we want to update our cache name. What will happen to our application? We are reloading the page and we are getting here cache storage not version 1 but version 2 and version 1 still hangs there. And this is bad because it takes storage of the browser. We must clean old versions. This is why inside Activate, what we can do is to get access to the event, then call here event dot wait until, then we want to get all keys of our cache. This is why here caches dot keys. This will return for you an array. We have then, and we're getting our cache names as an array. And then here I want to return promise all. So we have a list of promises and we want to wait for all of them. So promise all. And inside I am passing cache names. So the array of our URLs, map, we're getting access to each of it. So cache name. I want to put here an empty array with our cache name and check for includes. And I'm passing inside cache name, which essentially means when such cache key does not exist there, then we're removing it. So I want to return here caches.delete and here is a cache name. So again, what it does, we are waiting for this whole construction, which returns a promise. Here we are getting access to all our keys of service workers. This is our cache names as an array. Now here we are creating promise all and we are looping through our cache names. We are getting access for the cache name and then we are checking if we need to remove it or not. And if the name is not like here, then we are removing that. Which actually means we are keeping only the latest version. But what I see here is that we have a name collision between cache name that we have on the top and cache name that we got inside map. This is why let's create here an array, cache white list, and create an array with just cache name inside. Now instead of this construction, we can write cache white list includes, and it should work just fine. And now after page reload, inside our cache storage, we see only cache version 2 and version 1 was removed, which means we are not polluting the user browser. And the last thing that I want to show you is how to manually put data inside the cache when you need to. For example, here is our fetch and what we want to do for our list of to-dos, we want to put it in the cache after we are getting it. So we can check here if our event.request.url includes slash to-dos, then this is the URL from which we are fetching the list of to-dos. Now here we can write event respond with, and inside we have our fetch. So we are calling event.request and we are doing fetch as normal. And inside then we can get access to our network response, and we can return here caches open, to save inside cache, we have our cache name on the top and with then we have access to our cache. And now here we can write cache put in order to write something inside the cache manually. Here it will be our key event.request and as a value it will be network response.clone and it will clone the response and save here. And after this what we want to do is to return our network response. So this was our then, but what about catch? For example, when we are offline and we don't have data, we still want to respond with some data. So our application works and we can write here dot catch and here we can return the caches match and here is our event request. So we're checking, okay, it is cached and we're in catch and catch will be called here only when we're offline. So we couldn't fetch and here we have then and we're getting cached response that we can use. So if we are getting cached response, then we can just return it. And if we don't have it inside else, we can just return a new response. And inside I want to JSON stringify an empty array and also provide headers. 
it will be content type application JSON. So here is the whole logic. When our URL includes to dos, we want to respond with this part. We are trying to do fetch, and if it does not fail, then we are writing the response inside our cache. If it did fail, for example, we are offline, then we are checking do we have this cached response inside service worker. If yes, then we are returning it. If no, we are returning an empty array. The great part about it that we are not changing our code in the project. Like for example, here we are fetching data, a list of to-dos from the API, and this code stays exactly the same. We are just changing code about service workers. So let's check this now. I am reloading the page. And inside our cache, you can see that we have slash to-dos with some content length, which means inside we have our content. Now we can click on service workers, go offline, reload the page, and we will get this data from service worker because they were cached there before. And as you can see, our application still works, even offline just fine, which can help lots of customers. But if this is sounding too complicated for you and you just want to prepare for JavaScript interview to get a job, I highly recommend you to get my free PDF with a lot of JavaScript questions that you will for sure get on your interview.